Gosh, you know, I got to do a really good job. <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. That was beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful. Well, welcome. I want to welcome you to, to worship service this morning. And if you're visiting with us, we're just so, glad, so proud you decided to come and see us. And I uh, hope that you enjoy your visit. And hope that you come back and hope that you make this your home. A um, couple of announcements. We do have a new visitor's call. Now, this, this visitor's card, you will notice in your pew. And if you don't have one in your pew, let one of, your, let one of our ushers know and they'll get you one. We want to gather some information from you. We're not looking for a social security number. Or we're not going to do a credit check or anything like that. We just want an address where we can actually send you a card thanking you and send you some information about the church and things like that. So if you don't mind, if you're visiting with us, please fill that out and, and put it in the uh, tray when the or in the plate when the ushers come by. Um, and also, be sure to mark your attendance here. If you're, if you're going to be here for the Wednesday night supper, make sure that you uh, address that and check, check for that, how many people may be coming. I uh, see we're having and some on the casserole, fruit corn and salad. I mean, those have been really good. We had meatloaf last week, and it was out of this world. And, and, we, and the week before that, we had soup, beans, and cabbage. And they might be, I don't care what kind of bean it was, they're soup beans to me, so that's, that's all that matters. They were really good, really good. But uh, you need to try to come if you can. That's, that's a lot of fun and a lot of fellowship and uh, it's just a great meal. It's really a great meal. Uh, this week, if you look at your bulletins, you'll notice uh, some activities we've got going on. Uh, Monday night's yoga, <coughs> Tuesday is the Boy Scouts are meeting here at the, at the fellowship hall. Uh, I still cannot, every time I see F.H. I think funeral home. <laughs> I don't know why, why would I think that? Uh, uh, fellowship intercourse and choir practice after that, and then of course that next Sunday we've got a regular service at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And it's also next Sunday is, is communion, so be here for that. Uh, one special announcement, the uh, Ashley Wednesday service, because we don't have a named pastor just, just yet, uh, we cannot actually host an actual Wednesday service. So, um, Keith uh, up at uh, Nakuchi has uh, Keith Winmiller has offered to host us and has invited us to join them for their service on Wednesday. So, uh, that's part of that connectional ministry working together. That's part of it doing what it's supposed to do. So, we're very thankful for Keith and for Nakuchi and for them inviting us and, and, and agreeing to host us for their. their if you uh, want to plan to go, uh, I would kind of like, you know, kind of like a, a good group of us to go if we could uh, to represent to represent Cleveland. So uh, if it's if it's an issue about getting there or anything like that, uh, could be that we could meet here at the church and we can arrange some carpooling situations that way. So let us know as it gets closer. Let us know what your needs are and what you may can or cannot do. We'll we'll try to we'll try to work that out. Okay. And, uh, are there any other announcements before we get started? Right. Yes. Um, this is next month, actually, but I want y'all to start thinking about it. If you're scared of Christian yoga, you want to just try it in a really safe way, we are going to do chair yoga on the 12th of February at 11 o'clock. So everybody's welcome. That sounds much safer. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Okay, finally, uh, the altar flowers this morning are, are given to the glory of God by Jennifer and Johnny Saxon. So we thank you for those. They're absolutely beautiful. Would you bow with me, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in this moment of grace, thanking you for who you are, for what you do, and for all that you do for us. Now, Father, in this moment, as you give to us, allow us to give back to you. Allow us to give back in our words, in our sounds, in our music, our thoughts, and that that we have. Let us return that to you. Father, we love you, we respect you, and we're so thankful. We're so very thankful for all that you do for us. We pray that you would guide this service, have your hand upon it, and have your hand upon everyone in this room. We ask this in the loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand and turn to page number 487, Power in the Blood. Thank you. 
This morning as we go into our time of cares, concerns, we, we want to remember those on the, on, the, on the prayer list from before. Um, Karen, we were still lifting you up in prayer on um, the day of your brother. And uh, we're just praying that God will still have his hand of comfort on you. And, uh, we know that he does. We know that he does. Uh, some of you know Elaine Becker. Uh, Elaine comes to our 9 o'clock service a lot. She's here some. Uh, she lost her daughter suddenly last week. We still want to keep her in our prayers. Um, um, and we pray that, pray that you both just still in God's presence. And, and, and we, that he lets you know that he is real. That he is there. Um, Roger and Kathy Stralo, who normally sit right there. Both of them are uh, pretty sick. Pretty sick. So I think he's got strep throat and she's got... She's had strep and... Uh... Been taking the medicine for it, but she's going to go back to the doctor tomorrow. Okay. Because she still sounds bad. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. feels worse. Well, and, and, and listen, there's a lot of stuff going around now that we don't really, it doesn't have a name. We just know that you got this or this or this. So let's just take care of ourselves and, and know that we need to take care of one another as well. Uh, Rick and Angie, little Nicholas, if you remember a couple weeks ago, or three weeks ago, I guess now, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. The uh, little Nicholas came into the world. And uh, you remember I told you about it because his middle name is Alexander. I'm calling him. Uh, he has been a sick little fellow since he's been here. But uh, I understand after talking to him today that he still has some, some infection, I think, in his bladder and in his kidneys. But we hope that he's going to recover from that. We hope he's doing better. We're continuing to pray for him. God has him right here. You have to know that he has him right here. And I'm going to tell you something. If you ever doubt there is a God for any reason, you ask this woman to see the picture she's got of him on her phone today. Okay? <laughs> it is absolutely tremendous. It is absolutely tremendous. He is a beautiful little guy. And uh, so we're just praying for we're praying for him, we're praying for you that God will give you comfort in this as well. And uh, <coughs> praying for our church, continue to pray for our church that that it that it uh, that it prosper that God sees favor in us. And, and we think that he is. We think that he's doing wonderful things here, and we're so thankful for that. Uh, I, I don't mean to make this about this, but just had a recent had a recent opportunity to go to Petty to be involved with some of the global Methodist things, and uh, we're going to have three more, uh, two more trips down that way to be involved with some of the things that we're doing in the in the global Methodist church. And let me tell you, this movement is doing really wonderful. It's doing some amazing things. It's moving forward. It's moving forward in the way that it should be. They're putting God first. They're putting God first. And it's just amazing to be around some of these lay speakers and ministers and music people and all these other people who are really uh, an integral part of the growth of our church. And so I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful for what we've done. I'm thankful for where we're going. And I've got a lot of faith in what God is going to do here. A lot of faith in what He's going to do here. So we want to keep our church in our prayers. Uh, our community, our country, uh, we, 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 you know, we, we, we have a lot of issues going on in the world right now. We have a lot of issues going on in the state. Um, a lot of things going on. So we pray for our leaders. We, we lift them up and pray that God will give them guidance and that he will watch over them and protect them and, and give them the essence to make the right decisions and do the right things. So we pray for them. We've elected them and, and so we pray for them. Uh, uh, are there other requests? Uh, Joy Pruitt, I got to see her Friday night. She is leading or helped co lead a, a Bible study at the Mackenzells, and uh, she's really focused on her father who is, turned 98 this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, if we could just still, I mean, I think they're doing well considering, but um, just please still keep them in your prayers. We start going well, you know. For those of you who, and I'm sure most everybody here knows Joy, for those of you who don't know Joy Pruitt, she has been a long, a long time member of our church and has uh, just uh, suffered with cancer off and on, off and on, off and on. And she has just been uh, an example of grace with this. And uh, she has uh, she has her father now to take care of who is 90 some odd years old. So we definitely keep them lifted up as well. Would you pray with me, please? Most kind and gracious God, 
Father, we are thankful that we can actually come to this place and close our eyes today and lift up our desires and our requests and our needs to you. Father, we're thankful that we live in a place where we, we can do that with freedom. That we don't have to worry about being impugned or hurt for doing such a thing. Father, now we thank you for your gifts. We thank you for the many things that you do for us and, and all the ways that you touch us and bless us each and every day. Father, you, your love is endless. Your mercy knows no bounds. Your grace knows no ends. And your love never ceases. And Father, as we come to you today, we can come to you with our request on and in confidence you will hear us. You will know what we are saying because Father, you already know. As we acknowledge Elaine Becker and her daughter and Karen and her brother and little Nicholas and Roger and Kathy and Joy and her dad, Van. Father, as we make these requests known to you, Father, we know that you already know it. And that regardless of what we may think, you're already in the scene. You're already working in the hearts and the minds and in the healing process, both physical and mental and spiritual. You're already doing these things. And we love you for that today. Now, Father, we just close our eyes and praise you today. We ask that you would watch over this service. We ask, ask that you continue to give us grace even though sometimes we just don't know why we need it. We pray that you continue to watch over us, that you protect us as you always have. And help us to remember the prayer that your son Jesus taught his disciples when he said to them, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now would you please stand and join me for the Apostles' Creed on page 691. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
long as you could be where I'm sitting and hear that, hear that. It's just it's amazing. I think, I think history has shown us that most everything that happens uh, in our country, in our world, every big thing that happens, we, we can pretty well tell you where we were when it happened. Uh, you hear people talk about John F. Kennedy a lot. And that was always a big question. Where were you? What were you doing when this happened? And they can tell you. Things that seem to affect us in, in that way, we never really forget. We just have a hard time putting those things past us. September 11th was no, no different. People to this day can tell you what they were doing, where they were at, and how they were, how they were functioning that very day. And there's very few, it's, it's still so recent in time, that there's very few people out there who really don't know what you're talking about. But let me tell you what happened after September 11th. It drove an amazing amount of people to start searching. And it drove them to church. For months and months after the tragedy, churches were filled to the brim. Some churches reported as much as a 200% increase in, in, in attendance. Now, of course, that dropped off. But there were stories where people had confessions of faith because they had never been to a church. They had not been to a church since they were a child. And they got reacquainted with God. And they figured out that God was indeed the path they needed to be on. That following Him was never wrong and always the correct place to be. We find this with Jeremiah today in Lamentations, Old Testament book. Jeremiah was lamenting or upset or grieving about the temple. So he starts in, in chapter 2, and I, I, I want to pick it up from there. Uh, chapter 2, verse 11. I cried until the tears no longer come. My heart is broken. My spirit is poured out in agony as I see the desperate plight of my people. Little children and tiny babies are fainting. Now, if we go to chapter three, the, the next part of this is chapter three and begins with verse 19. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this, the faithful love of God never ends. <coughs> His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who depend on Him, to those who search for Him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. It is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of His discipline. Let them sit alone in silence beneath the Lord's demand. Let them faith, let them lie face down the dust, for there may be hope at last. Let them turn the other cheek to those who strike him and accept the insult the insults of their enemy. For no one is abandoned by the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Most kind and gracious God. We thank you for the reading of your word today. And I pray, O oh God, that each and every word penetrate the heart, the mind and the soul of each person listening. And let it be taken as how it's intended. And let it be used to further his kingdom. In the loving name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah is expressing his dismay, his total his total grief with the fact that his temple the temple that he loves as the Lord's temple and the city that he has grown to love is being destroyed and he's lamenting that in word, he's telling that, that that's more than he can possibly take that there's this he just cannot do this anymore 
And he gets to the point where he begins to question. And he has two questions for God. Number one was, where are you? Where are you, God? And the second question was real simple. It followed up and said, do you still love us? Do you still care for us? I'm sure that I speak very honestly when I say that every person in this room, every single person in this room has been to a point, been in a place in their life where they wondered what can happen next. We feel as though the earth is dropping what can possibly happen next. How much more can I possibly take? Because the world is against me. My family's not working. I have trouble at work. I have all of these issues. How much more can I take? And I'm hurting. I'm hurting because of this. I just don't feel as though I'm capable of taking any more. And you see, that's what Jeremiah thought. And then it hit him. And then it hit him. My strength and my encouragement is not found in this world anyway. It's not found in the walls of a temple or the halls of a temple or in the walls of a kingdom. It's found in God. Our hope is found in God. Our encouragement is found through God. That's who we rely on for all of that. And you see, the beauty of it is, it's, it's very simple to do. We simply have to trust Him. Several years ago, corporations in the United States, I don't know if they do anymore or not, but they used to do these retreats. And they would go out and they'd do these group retreats. Now, some of y'all may be familiar with this. And you had to fold your hands. One of the exercises they had was a trust exercise. And you had to fold your hands like this and fall back in somebody's arms. You couldn't bend your legs. You had to fall straight back. Okay? Listen. I love y'all. <laughs> I really do. It would be my luck that the person who was supposed to catch me sneezed or something about the time and that would let me in. But, but you had to be able to trust that person implicitly. You had to have no doubts in your mind whatsoever. And they said it would take forever to get the person to finally do it. But once they'd done it and they had gained that confidence and they had gained that strength, they could do it with no problem. Because they knew that beyond a shadow of a doubt, that person would catch them. They knew that. So they didn't have any doubts. They didn't worry about it. And see, that's how we are with God. That's how God sees us. God sees us and says to us, listen, you're my children. If you fall, I will catch you. I won't let you hurt. I won't let you be damaged beyond repair. I won't let you get broke beyond fixing. But you have to trust me. You have to be willing to fall back and know that I'm going to catch you. And you have to understand that, that I'm doing that because I love you. I'm doing that because I care about you. You see, Jeremiah went from being angry and saddened over the temple to actually praising God and giving God glory and saying that no matter how long, no matter how weak you may think you are in this world or how bad your world may be or how bad things may seem to you right now, God is always good. He's always available. And he always welcomes you. And he always catches you. He always catches you when you fall. Always. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you fall, you might get a scratched nose. You might get a bump knee. You might get something like that. You might have something a little worse. God's still there. He's still real. He still, he still loves you. He still cares. He still does. See, you can't stop that because he created us. He's our creator. He made us. He loves us. He knows exactly what we need. And he knows the timing in which we need it. 
He knew exactly what Jeremiah needed. Jeremiah needed to get that grief out of his heart and out of his mind. He needed to do that in order to acknowledge that, you know what? God is good. Because he realized that the temple can be rebuilt. The wall can be rebuilt. The people can come back. But I can never replace what God has done. I can never replace myself the love that he has or the care that he has. I can never replace that. So for that, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God put that forth for me to be a part of. I'm glad that he said, look, Brian, fold your hands like this and just fall back. Don't worry, I'll catch you. Now, I don't want y'all going and trying that at home. Okay? I don't want to hear that. I don't want y'all calling and saying, listen, I got a busted ankle because I did you. I'm not challenging you, okay? But you know what? You have to believe. You have to know that God is good. You have to know that he loves you more than anything that you could ever think of. Anything you could ever think possible, he loves you. And he's happy when you're happy. And when you cry, he cries. But he's also there to smile with you, to cry with you, but also dry up your tears when he needs to. He's there to hit your grief when he needs to. He's there to put those thoughts in your mind and your heart that you need in order to go one more day. One more day. See, he's the fixer. And you can do it with total and complete confidence. And you can walk around that chest and say, you know what? I'm believing in God. I'm, I'm, laying, I'm waiting to see what God does. Because no matter what that may be, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to understand. I'm going, I'm going to take it. I may not always understand it. But I'm going to take it because God loves me. And I know He loves me. I, I used to. Uh, I used to uh, uh, volunteer at Yona Elementary. And uh, kids would get out of the car and even I would go open the door for them so they could get out. You know, and that's the thing to do. Of course, Kevin, you know, you, you've been up there. And uh, <laughs> a lot of you have. Kids don't do that anymore. That's their, they've grown that, haven't they? And uh, you see these kids get out and they just bounce. So I come home to a county. I've seen the cutest kids today. I've seen them. You wouldn't believe this little guy or you wouldn't believe this little girl. Hair combed and with backpacks and just, just all the way up. And they get out and the way they would look at your mamas and daddies. I love you, mom. I love you, son. I love you, honey. I love you. I love you. And it was always, I love you. I love you. You hear that every now and then from a child who couldn't say it exactly right. Well, let me tell you something. It was so pure and so unadulterated. It was raw, unfiltered, pure love. And you could sense it. You could feel it. And you could see in that child when they were walking up that little, that little hallway, that they had confidence because they knew that mama or daddy was right there. And they felt good. And they felt like they could conquer the world because that's my mommy and that's my daddy. And they had confidence and they had strength walking in. And I've always admired that. And I used to tell Kurt that. I love you, son. I love you, son. Still tell him. I'm not afraid to tell him. I'll tell him in public. I don't care. I want, I want the world to know that I love my son and it's okay. And the girls, I'm telling you right now, I tell them, but they don't like it. They're teenagers. <laughs> they do not like it. But it's okay. It's okay to share the love of what God has given you. To share the fact that you give God the credit for it. That you give God the glory for it. That you, you know that God is where your hope and where your comfort is found regardless. So, we're going to have some bad times. The world sometimes is going to seem like it goes over our head. It's going to seem like it's bigger than we are. And, and we're going to think, I just don't think I can handle this. I just don't think I can handle this. But then think about Jeremiah. Think about Job. Think about the heroes of faith in Hebrews. All the people in Hebrews who relied on their faith in God. 
Think about them. Think about what he's done in your life and what he's, what he's going to do and what he has proposed to do if you just let him. So, submit to him. Instead of forming your arms, clasp your hands. And say, you know what, God, I'm ready. And I'm ready for anything that you want to bring towards me because I know that you are going to handle it. You are my keeper. You are the one who made me. You're my protector. You're my comforter. You're my physician. You're all of these things. And no matter what happens, Father, help me to accept it with grace and know that whatever happens, you love me. And you want the very best for me. This is not forever. This is all temporary. Now think about that for just a minute. Think about that for just a minute. When you do see it, think about how it's going to be. Think about how that's going to be. It's going to be amazing. So you want him to say, well done. You did good. So give him the honor. Give him the glory. Come to him with hands folded because he is your hope. He is your source of strength. He is your source of encouragement. When you're sick, when you're hurting, when you're grieving, when you're destitute, when you don't know what the next minute, next hour, next day is going to bring. Your hope is found in him. Did you bow to me? Father, we just thank you that you are a God that we can come to. A God that we can talk to that no matter what happens or what we may have done, how we may have been, what past we may have had, what things may have gone on that, that we may not want to talk about. Father, you already know them. And we are thankful that you are a God that we can come to in all honesty for all of the all of the shell is broken. Everything is stripped down. It's just us and you. And Father, we can have a conversation. Now, Father, I pray today that you just allow us to do just that. But Father, help, help us to turn to you all the time. Not when just things are really bad or when things are really good, but all the time. Help us to rely on you as an integral, necessary necessary part of our everyday living. Father, you made us. We know that you want to commune with us. We know that you want us to talk to you and you want to talk to us. And I pray that that line of communication be open today. Father, we love you and we thank you that you love us. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for what was done on the cross. That can never be repeated here. We thank you for that gift. In the loving name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I would ask you to I lost my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Father, as we come to you today, we just ask that you would bless these gifts. We pray for these gifts and we ask that you bless the giver. Father, let these gifts be used to further your kingdom and all that it does. Let it enrich those who give it and may it be a blessing to all it touches. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
uh, please remain standing for our final hymn, which is on page number 578, Text Thank <laughs> you. 